Hi there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is a Cook Along Podcast Quick Bite. If you've played some of my podcasts, especially the ones in the sweet categories, you will notice I use a lot of cinnamon. I love cinnamon. Most people, I think, love cinnamon. I don't remember ever talking to anybody who said, oh, I hate cinnamon, or I don't even like cinnamon. That would be weird. Most of us like it, and most of us cook with it. Most of us use it in sweet things more than in savory things, but it also makes a nice addition to savory things like Mexican foods, a taco seasoning or a chili. A little bit of cinnamon in there can really brighten things up. Lately, I have been asked a new question, or it seems like a new question to me, which is, which cinnamon is good for you? Now, I know there have been a lot of articles in the past couple of years, few years maybe, about cinnamon's beneficial healing properties. Since that is happening more and more often, I think I want to talk a little bit about cinnamon in general and then get some specifics about it. So here are some things you may or may not know about cinnamon. First, there is only one quote-unquote true cinnamon. True cinnamon is from Sri Lanka, which used to be called Ceylon, Hence, today, you will find it listed in stores where you can find it as Ceylon cinnamon. A Ceylon cinnamon tree is a very small evergreen resembling a bay tree, you know, like bay leaves or a laurel, kind of the same look. And the spice of the Ceylon cinnamon comes from the inner bark, which is stripped from the tree with knives, cut into segments, and then left in the sun to dry which makes it curl into delicate papery quills, which we know as cinnamon sticks. Ceylon cinnamon sticks are different than other kinds of cinnamon sticks or cinnamon bark that you may see because it's a little more delicate. It's really papery and breaks very easily. And most of the cinnamon sticks you'll find in the store are much sturdier than that because we want them to be able to stir our exotic drink with, so they need to have some heft to them. If you're looking at a cinnamon stick and you're not sure which kind it is, if it's not labeled, just remember that the better quality cinnamons like the Ceylon are more breakable. They're very fragile. Other cinnamon, all other cinnamon, is a form called cassia, which is not actually a cinnamon tree. It's a close relative of a cinnamon tree. It's originally a native of China, but the trees are now spread all throughout Asia. It is Ceylon's poorer relation, shall we say. It's coarser, it's redder, it has a stronger aroma, and it is easier and cheaper to produce, which means that most of the cinnamon you can find in your local stores are made from cassia cinnamon, not Ceylon cinnamon. In fact, one of the most popular cinnamons is Saigon cinnamon or Vietnamese cinnamon. It has the very strongest flavor and is a cassia. So it's in the poor relations field. Now, the thing about Ceylon is that it's a milder cinnamon. So it takes more and you don't get that punch. If you're looking for something in a cinnamon roll, you really want, you know, that pow punch of cinnamon. Ceylon is really not the ticket. But if you're looking for health benefits, and please note, I am not in any way advocating for that. It's just in response to articles that I have heard about or read. I'm not in any position to make any kind of health recommendations. I'm simply telling you that if you are pursuing that path already, the Ceylon is what you want. These are some of the things I've read about cinnamon being good for you. It's noted for managing blood sugar levels, promoting circulation, and providing a lot of beneficial antioxidants. It's high in fiber and calcium, which helps improve colon health, they say. But again, how much fiber are you getting from a ground up teaspoon of cinnamon? It seems like not a lot. Cinnamon also contains minerals like iron and magnesium and other things. And here comes the disclaimer, okay? Too much cinnamon may not be good for your system. All cinnamon varieties contain some level of coumarin, which is a toxic compound. 
Coumarin is what makes the aroma that we all know and love in cinnamon, but too much of it may cause both short and long-term health problems, such as liver damage. And the Coumarin levels differ dramatically between the cassia and the Ceylon cinnamon. Ceylon cinnamon is full of all the health-promoting qualities that they advocate and none of the toxic ones. So that's what I tell people when they say to me, what form of cinnamon is the kind that's good for you and that has health benefits is you want the Ceylon, not the cassia. So that makes it a little harder to find. I'll talk about that in a minute. A study published in the National Library of Medicine found only trace amounts of the coumarin in the bark of the Ceylon cinnamon tree. And the cassia bark in the same study contains substantial levels of coumarin. So be careful. Don't just be adding cinnamon to your coffee every morning because you think it's going to help you. It's actually not really great for you unless you have the right kind. Ceylon is considered to be the safer variety, and since it isn't lacking in the antioxidants, the essential oils, the polyphenols, all the healthy compounds, that's the one to use if you're looking for cinnamon in your coffee for its health benefits. A couple of other good things about cinnamon besides the obvious, which is the flavor and the smell, because who doesn't love the smell of cinnamon? In fact, you know what? I've heard that realtors, if they're doing an open house, they'll sometimes bake a batch of cookies. And sometimes it's chocolate chip because, you know, you're going to feed them to people. But the same can be done with cinnamon, just a little cinnamon on a pan on the stove to warm up the atmosphere in the house. You know, it makes the house smell good. And it has positive memory links and positive connotations of hominess. So anyway, piece of trivia. Cinnamon oil, it actually turns out, will prevent bugs from feasting on you. It destroys mosquito larvae. Now that means you'd have to put some cinnamon oil into the places where mosquitoes might breed, which probably means you have standing water somewhere around your house, which means if you're in control of it, you should just dump it out. But if it's something you can't dump out, then add a little cinnamon oil to it so it doesn't grow mosquito larvae. It's an environmentally friendly pesticide, and you can add a few drops to your sunscreen or your sun lotion or whatever and help keep the bugs away from you. Cinnamon doesn't have a sweet taste on its own. That may surprise people, but it does amplify the sweetness in other ingredients. So that's why I say you can use it in savory dishes just as well, because there's no sweetness to it. It just adds a sort of spiciness and brightness that can be nice in savory dishes. But if you add it to things that have sugar in it, it makes the sweetness more pronounced. Cinnamon also acts as a natural preservative. Its flavor compounds are not water soluble. So sometimes people may put cinnamon in things to make them last longer. For instance, I understand that it helped preserve the dead in ancient Egypt If that's not a natural preservative testimonial, I don't know what is. Also, this is funny, but it's true. Just smelling the wonderful odor of cinnamon boosts brain activity. Having trouble studying, having trouble retaining, heat up a little cinnamon on your stovetop or keep a jar of cinnamon near your desk to sniff or better yet, eat some cookies. Eat some cookies while you're studying. Cinnamon has to be an ingredient. Keep them close by and your brain activity will boost. (laughs) I should start a campaign. Cookies for for brain activity. (laughs) If you're looking for the Ceylon, it can be a little hard to find because, as I said, the cassia is so much cheaper to produce that it's everywhere. But I know you can find it at Penzi's Spices. You can find it at Walmart and at Whole Foods, and Whole Foods is owned by Amazon, which means you can also buy it online at Amazon. You cannot find it at Costco. Costco sells cassia cinnamon. Again, when in doubt, know that the cinnamon that's better for you but has less flavor is fragile when it's in stick form and lighter brown when it's ground up. And the darker stuff and sturdier stuff is all cassia. 
So use it, certainly, because it's wonderful in terms of taste. But do not use excessive amounts of it, and don't pretend that's going to be good for you, because it's not. It's toxic. That's the bad news for today. But if you don't eat it in vast quantities, you should be able to enjoy it cheerfully for the rest of your life. If you want to learn about other spices and other cooking tips, check out my website, thecookalongpodcast.com, for other quick bites on various subjects. There's a place at the top with a drop-down menu that says Quick Bites, and you'll find all of these non-cooking kind of conversations. And, of course, there's a new one every other week where you'll learn something new. There's one about garlic. There's one about vanilla. There will be, in the future, one about pepper. And maybe I'll talk about cloves. And meanwhile, the weeks in between are all brand new cook with me kind of recipes. Cook along and have a lot of fun with me or just listen and learn things you may not have known before. Tell your friends you listen to the Cook Along podcast. Contact me if you feel like it on the Facebook page. The Cook Along podcast has a page. Meanwhile, find something cinnamony to make today to brighten up your day. And until next time, happy cooking. Happy cooking.